Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for still listening to videos in my uh, YouTube channel, by Mr. Shahid's Corner. This time I'm going to continue uh, sharing information about marriage in Islam. Before I start, let me uh, remind you that I'm not a priest, I'm not a preacher, I'm a scholar in Indonesia. And I'm using this book to explain about marriage in Islam in a way that I thought that my explanation would be useful for everyone around the world to understand what Islamic marriage is. In case that you will find different perspectives or different uh, feedback and opinions about what marriage is from different cultures in the world, then we need to have further discussion about that matter. Because Islam is a religion is associated with uh, local cultures of many different countries. But the pure one or the pure Islam is actually driven from the Quran and Hadith from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let me show you the book. I'm going to open the share screen now. That's um, so this is the book that I have been using to you before. Um, this one, this is the book. This is about a, a happy family. Of course, everyone wants to have a happy family. It's not easy to maintain a family, but it's very different when you start it with maintaining its existence in the world where circumstances are even more complex than uh, years before, even 1960s or 1970s. This book has important understandings that relate to marriage in Islam. We have discussed about this one before. You can go back to my uh, first video in this series about marriage in Islam. I also have talked about this one women that you may not marry, ethnics and uh, people from different races are being explained in Islam. Next, we will have, this is about uh, Budi Begarti or Akhlaqul Karima in Islam. I also have discussed about this one and how to see the candidate of your, of your wife. We have talked about this one in, I think it was in video three, right? Now we have talked about this one in previous videos as well. Now I'm going to further my explanation about uh, this one. This is the father's message to his uh, daughter. All right, before I start, let me say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalatu wassalamu ala sarafil amdiya iwar musalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi rasulillahi ajma'in. May God protect us from any uh, whispers, whether it, whether the whisper is from Satan or from uh, humankind. If you open Surah An-Nas, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Qul a'uzu brabin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, so if you pay attention to the last two ayat in Anas uh, as a surah in the Quran, then you will understand that basically uh, two things emerge in our society in the form of humans and in the form of jinn. So we ask for protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through all the angels that he has to protect us in dunya while akhirah and also uh, we ask for protections in in order that in order that god allows us to live peacefully uh, in the world and in the hereafter i mean so in this section uh, video four of this series i'm going to talk a little bit further about the stages of um, uh, marriage in Islam, especially when you have uh, married in Islamic way. 
I start my explanation about, you see, this is the picture of uh, this book. Actually, this book is an old book. It was published, I think, around 1990s. And uh, there was no statement at all in this book that people may not use this. But actually, this is from the Islamic religion, and it was driven from the Quran and Hadith. Um, and I think it would be fine for me to use this book to share with all of you through this uh, YouTube platform. The first part is the pesan ayah kepada anaknya. It means this is the, uh, the father's message to his uh, daughter. It says from Abdullah bi Ja'far bi Abi Talib. Um, uh, delivered a message to his uh, daughter when his daughter got married. It's like this one. I will read the Indonesian version and then I will try to translate it into English. After that, I will explain to you what does it mean to English. Okay. Uh, the first one uh, is A. So Abdullah Ja'far bin Abi Talib talked to his daughter. So imagine that this is Abdullah bin Ja'far Abu Talib, and this one is his daughter. So uh, this is Javanese culture, actually, but this is supposedly it's like that. We imitate what uh, the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did during uh, the Prophet of Muhammad times. First one is um, my daughter. Berhati-hatilah kau jangan bersifat cemburu, karena cemburu itu adalah kunci perceraian. So, the first message to his daughter from the father is that, uh, my daughter, please be careful uh, with the uh, jealousy attitude, you know, jealousy, jealousy, cemburu. Jealousy means um, envy or jealous when you see uh, your husband, because jealousy is the key to divorce. Uh, this this is the very important message that the father has to say to his daughter because the most important thing for the daughter to keep in his marriage is, is the control of the emotion, especially dealing with jealous. To whom that the daughter can feel jealous? It can feel jealous too the husband and that kind of jealousy feeling can trigger further feelings or emotion that relate to the divorce and the marriage becomes a, a failure. B, berarti hati langkau jangan banyak menegur kritik terhadap suamimu karena banyak menegur itu menimbulkan kebencian. This is also an important message for the daughter and so this is the very basic and wise idea at this point to see Abdullah bin Ja'far Abi Talib uh, as a father or as a, as a married man who has a daughter. And then he reminded his daughter about a few important things in marriage in order to make his daughter uh, protect his own marriage from any other intrusion. So the point B means that be careful when you um, try to warn the husband, you know, warn, warning, you know, or remind the husband. Although as a, as a wife, a woman, have, uh, a, a woman has a very important rules in terms of warning the husband. But remember, too much warning will create hatred toward the wife. So unconsciously, the husband will feel uncomfortable in his own marriage. So that's the very basic important, important thing, uh, the point B. Do not try to criticize or warn the husband too much or too many times, as if your husband is like a little kid. So give space to your husband when he does something. He was his uh, mother's son, his father's son, all right? So when you marry with a man, you need to remember that the man is your husband. It's not your child, it's not your son. What you need to do is to control 
the things that you can want or the things that you can control in your marriage. Do not try to criticize too much or let's say one day you criticize one or two things and then tomorrow you criticize, you criticize one or two things, the other things, okay? Let me try to visualize like this. On Monday, you criticize two things. And then Tuesday, you criticize two, three things. Wednesday, you criticize one thing. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you criticize only one thing. So how many criticism of that in one week? I think, it, I think it's around seven to eight criticism. Imagine if that happens in one, one month, two months, three months, four months, and five months until one year how many criticism that your husband will, will receive. So the point of this, the, that you need to remember in this case is to control what you can criticize. If you would like to remind your husband, uh, let him know by asking his permission to, to you to say something. Okay, so that is the way you control or you lead your husband is by controlling yourself as a wife. That's a very basic important thing. You can say, this is what I do. This is what I'm doing in my marriage. I've been doing this in a good way. I control myself before speaking in front of you that you're my husband. So please allow me to say this thing, okay? In, in, in polite way, <laughs> that's very important that you need to remember at that point. Now we come to point C. Um, pakailah senantiasa celak penghias alas mata karena celak itu sebagai perhiasan. Now this is also important for the wife to wear. You know, although Western people think that it is the Arabic culture or Islamic culture, no, actually it's not. The point C shows that women should wear eyeliner, something that you wear in your in your eyes, like around here. So it will help your eyes look pretty and look beautiful, okay? And that is really important for a husband to see. Do not appear beautiful or pretty or sexy just when you want to go for work. When you stay at home, just being with your husband or with your children, it is important for you to appear beautiful or even sexy because your husband deserves that, okay? Um, when women say, oh, women have to be like this for men, whatever. No, actually, that is the condition where it is you yourself, woman, wants to be seen like what? So you show yourself, okay? It is not the man's duty to control yourself as a woman. You can appear naked. You can appear without clothes, you can appear like a crazy person, or you can appear with a baya, burqa, anything you want to wear. But remember that what you wear and how you appear in public will reflect upon what you want to receive from men. Never get angry to any man if they assault you because you appear sexy, okay? So control yourself. You cannot say, oh, I want to feel sexy. I want to be naked. And then you show, you tell the whole world that, okay, man, you have to lower your gaze. That's true. But then at one point, deep inside his mind, he will think that you are not worthy of being a wife because you appear sexy. You appear sexy to many men. Okay, so you have to control that point. I hope you get that idea. So that is the, the message of the father to his daughter when his daughter marries a man, another a man who becomes his husband. We continue my description. This is about the mother. Okay, so from, from the mother to her daughter, previously, I'm talking about uh, the message from his father to his daughter. Now I'm going to talk about the message from her mother, the mother to her daughter, okay? Now this is, this riwayat or this narrative were taken 
from uh, when there was wedding between Amru bin Hujru, king of Kinda, with Ummu Iyas bin Ti'af bin Muhallam Ashaibani. So, Masula ibu mempelai perempuan, and then the mother of Ummu Iyas uh, came to the room, and then uh, her name was Ummama bin Ti'af to the room of her daughter who is getting married at that time. And then she said this way, my daughter, so you imagine, imagine you look at this picture and then she said like this, my daughter, my daughter, uh, please keep well 10 important things. You will be um, happy afterward. Okay, so you need to remember Ten things. Now, this is I know you will see that this is Islamic perspectives, and this is only uh, existing in the Arabic culture. But if you find it useful, if you find it good, why not? Yeah, you can take it. Nothing, nothing wrong if you find uh, Islamic culture or Islamic perspective is good for you. You can take it. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Unless what I'm telling you here to kill people, people then you have to avoid it at all costs. The first aspect or the first thing that the mother remind her daughter when her daughter get married is first, hormatilah suamimu dengan mengembirakan serta memberi kepadanya. So the first point is uh, respect your husband by making him happy and then provide pleasure for him. It's very important for you to know about this point. It's making your husband happy and then uh, provide pleasure for him. Well, a, a woman who get married say, oh, what about me? My husband also need to make me happy. Well, of course, right? It, it works both ways. If your husband happy with you, then you will find the, you will, you will get the reward after that, all right? Because the person who is living with you in the same roof is happy, then you can feel yourself content with him, right? See, that's the reflection. It started with you. And when you provide pleasure to your husband, then he would give you something in return that might not always dealing with money, something that you can wish from your marriage by marrying that person. So that's the first point or the first aspect that you need to remember about uh, getting married. Number two, the message from her mother to the mother to her daughter is uh, so, please obey your husband's order very well. You need to remember this. Why? In, in the Western perspectives, it's, it is almost contradictory at this point. Thinking as if the, the, the we're talking about male and female and man and woman, everything should be equal, equity. Well, well, yeah, at one point in the society, yes. But in the marriage or in the family, the husband has his own space and roles and then uh, capabilities as well as limitation and strength. The same thing to the wife. The wife has strength, limitations, roles, and functions in the marriage. So the point number two is obey. Obey your husband's order very well. Okay, so that's the point. You both, you get married, you marry with this man, and then he becomes your husband. So it is inevitable that, of course, you will listen to your husband's words, right? But if it is if what your husband says to you is bad, then you don't have to listen to him. And then you can see the divorce comes. But you need to think it over because the one who decided to marry that person was you. Although through the wedding ceremony, it was your father or your um, male, uh, male parts or male members of your male, <laughs> members of your uh, family who are male that represent you in your wedding marriage, all right? So that's, that's obvious. 
just like this one, you go to school and then you study with a particular teacher and you listen to him or her carefully, that's your teacher. Imagine with someone who is living with you together in a marriage. Okay? If it is good, follow it. If it is not good, then you don't have to do anything at all. So you, you know what's best, what you need to do, right? Number three, uh, please pay attention to the look on his two eyes. Um, don't let your husband see something bad from you. Okay, so this is very intriguing. Point number three. Um, you can appear sexy or appear beautiful in front of many other people, but if you appear uh, dusty or let's say ugly right in front of your husband, then you epically fail as a woman. Okay, so the key, the, the most important thing in here is that being being pretty in front of your husband. If you have tried to do this and then your husband doesn't respond your um, your effort as you wish, then there might be something else comes to him. Maybe he has a problem in his job or he has problems with his friends or he might have a stressful days outside of the house and then he doesn't want to bother you so he didn't say anything about your appearance in sexy or beautiful okay so and uh, but if your if his eyes are looking at you so like this for example if that is what you see then you are in the yellow light <laughs> okay so you need to really control that put a nice perfume and then wear makeup and then be nice. He's your husband, okay? Otherwise, he's just random guys outside. Then you want to meet, you are uh, hang out, and then you spend the night together. And then in the morning, you guys split. You, you, you don't know each other and they pretend nothing happened. Well, if that is the way of life that you want to live, then this video is not for you. But if you want to be a woman who is respected as a wife and then being a, being a woman who wants to be a mother and then a wife with children, then you need to remember that understanding these points are very crucial. It's a very long journey. I just started my marriage in 2015. It wasn't easy. I never had girlfriend before. I met my wife when she was introduced by her parents. We never, we never met before. And then it was just a month, not really a month, just for a few days. And then um, everything was organized and then we got married. And now I've married with my wife for about, this is 2021. I guess it's almost six years, right? Six years and time is running. So don't, don't mess around with silly things. That's, that's my message to you <laughs> as a friend. Uh, number four, you see this point. Please pay attention to his nose. Uh, be careful. Don't let him smell something bad from you or something smell from your house. So this is number four. Keep, don't let, don't let him sense or smell your body odor. Well, people say, oh, this is good for women to not bathing because men likes women. No, 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 that's completely wrong. I myself as a man, I love women who has sweet smell, okay? If, if uh, it has bad smell, I'm not gonna be around her. <laughs> okay, it's very crazy and very uh, stupidly intimidating, okay? So wear something nice. Hear yourself beautiful because I believe every woman are beautiful unless they do not want to appear beautiful. Sexy is not always beautiful. Beautiful is appearing sexy with good attitude and then good knowledge. Number five, uh, please pay attention to your husband when he sleeps. Um, 
when he was uh, sleeping, do not disturb him. Because when you disturb your husband when he sleeps, when he wakes up, he will be a Godzilla. Why did you wake me up? I was sleeping in this couch and then you came to me, you disturbed my sleeping. Now, my days are over because of you. Okay. Imagine if that happens, it's going to be annoying, right? So control it um, unless you have a little conversation with your husband before asking questions like this. Um, honey, when you want to go sleep, remember there will be Isha prayer time. Is it okay if I wake you up to remind you with Isha prayer? Talk to him like that. And then if he said, please do wake me up, that, then that's okay, you wake him up. But if you didn't ask anything, you forget to ask, let him sleep. Okay, so um, that's very obvious, point number five. It's uh, number six, pay attention to your husband for the time of his eating. Don't let him hungry because starving, um, or continuously starving, it will create bad temper. Yeah, you know, like that, bad temper or anger. Yeah, point number six is, is important. If you, excuse me, if you are a very um, obedient wife or, or woman to be a wife of, of a man, then you will pay attention to this point number six. Don't let your husband get starving in his own home. He stays with you and you are his wife. So it doesn't matter if you ask him, honey, do you want to eat? Or we, we are about to have lunch, what do you want to eat? You can ask him, right? That's, that's very important. Ask him uh, that kind of question. When you ask him that kind of question, it means that he is available right in front of you, that you consider him alive in front of her and he will come to you, right? So don't let him starving, don't let him hungry. Point number seven, please keep your husband belongings and then uh, property. Um, okay, for example, he wants you to keep his money or his bank account or his uh, incomes, even his belonging, his wallet, everything that he should keep, then he trusted you to keep those things, then you need to be responsible to keep those things carefully. Otherwise, it's going to damage and ruin your own uh, marriage with, with him. He trusted you, okay? Not just for marriage, even with your boss, with your co-workers in the company or where you work, whatever it is, then if you're being trusted to keep something uh, precious, something important, then you know what you need to do, right? You have, you have to be really careful about that one. Um, Point number eight, um, please keep the children and his family and his um, housemates carefully. So imagine if you have a rich husband and then he hired housemates to help you. And then you both have met for about 15 or 20 years. And then you both have well, children at home. Then it is your duty, your responsibility and your Task to be morally responsible, keeping the children safe because you are the mother at home. Yeah, so if you say that this is a duty or this is the regulation, and you feel that you're being forced, then that just means that you're not happy with your marriage, and you feel marriage is like obedience. Getting married is happiness. You should be the way who you are, but if you need any help, you can ask your parents or your siblings or your extended family to help you with children if you don't have man any money to pay for the housemate, like what I'm doing now, okay? Point number nine, uh, okay, so point number nine means that do not try to... Um, it means you say no, for example, your husband wants you to do something for him or for the children and you can do it and you say no i don't want to do that why don't you do it yourself 
if that happens once, twice, third, fourth times, and even several times, then it indicates that you want you don't want to stay with him any longer because when he needs you to do something and you say you keep saying no, or you uh, try to reject what he wants uh, from you, right? So that's one thing that you need to remember. So do not try to um, reject what your husband uh, order or wants to say from you because it's going to make him sad. Point number 10, um, do not open the secret of your husband because when you open his secrets, you will not be safe from his, from his uh, I'm not saying revenge at this point, Pembalasannya, it means when you do something to others, then of course you will get the payment, <laughs> payment back. What I mean is like this one. Whatever you did will always come back to you. Well, I see that from Darman, right? Sorry, sorry, Darman, I don't mean to mention your name here, but that's just an example. Um, and then be really careful when you are not happy in front of him. Uh, while in fact, he is in the middle of the feeling, sorrow feeling, or in the middle of being sad. Uh, the best one, the best thing that you need to do is, uh, when you are sad, do not show your sad face when your husband is happy. And on the contrary, do not show a happy face when your husband is sad. So it's a very, um, very simple point number 10, but it is so important for you to remember that it really works both ways, not just for the husband, but also for the wife, okay? All right, now this is important for you to remember. I have shared with you about the message of a father to his, his daughter who is getting married. And then I have shared with you the message from the mother to his daughter. Why the question is, perhaps some of you might ask, why is it the wife that needs to do all these things? What about the man? Typically, my answer is that the men are informed long before he gets married. To be frankly speaking with all of you in this video, any Muslim man is uh, taught of being a man in Islamic way. He needs to do prayer uh, five times a day, do fasting Ramadan month, uh, be nice and kind to his parents and his siblings, be nice to his neighbors, be good at work, doing the best that he can. And now when he is approaching the topic about marriage, then he needs to be a good husband for his wife. So there are other th important things. And the Islamic community, the woman stays at home basically uh, she is not for she is like, she has right to go to, to the mosque, but she is not forced in comparison to the men. Yeah, you know, uh, men is encouraged to go to masjid to do prayer, unlike the woman, because women takes care of the house and children and all all belongings at home. All right. My dear friends, students, and uh, YouTube viewers, everywhere you are, thank you to listening to this video for in the series about marriage in Islam. If you have any question or any feedback, you can write down your questions in the comment section. I'll try to answer that as best as I could. Um, in the next video, we will be talking about these two things. Um, yeah, it's about Walima. Okay, one, uh, we will talk about this one uh, in the next uh, video about the wedding, how to organize the wedding in Islamic way. And I hope that you can uh, get the, the message or the, the benefit of having uh, that this kind of information. I stop share at this point. Okay. So that was it, my explanation about marriage in Islam. I hope 
that you can take the benefits from it, that you try to understand, oh, this is the way how Islam treats women in her marriage. So there was no forced marriage in Islam. There was no, uh, we don't have anything that relates to when a woman is being forced to marry a man and that's, not, that's completely wrong. Woman is actually given her rights to marry any man that she wants to be marrying with. But she was introduced first, let her know that this is the man. And, and the man too, the man is introduced to the, uh, the wife candidates and he would likely choose the woman based on the piety or the akhakul karima, all right? I hope my explanation is useful for all of you and we'll be seeing together again in the next video five, still about getting married. Until then, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a good day. Please stay healthy. I mean, inshallah.